Well, I just can't help it. I had to get something else old. So uh, I've been looking at this for the past, hmm, since winter time. A buddy of mine uh, picked up a couple bikes and uh, he only wanted one or two out of them, but it was in a lot of bikes. So uh, he selling a couple and uh, I picked one up. Honda CB360T. Uh, I don't know too much about these bikes yet. Uh, I've done, I don't know, maybe a couple hours of research on it collectively. Um, and these are pretty good starting bikes if you want to get into biking. But my current thing is just get it running and drive it around as a dirt bike for now. I'm not really interested in uh, motorcycling yet. But uh, the first thing to go is going to be this uh, bar in the back here. Because that, I know, that looks like something out of a, a garden chair. Or a, what do you call it? A yard chair or chair set table set i don't know it looks ridiculous is what i'm saying and i don't like it uh other than that uh there's no kick lever on the other side so we couldn't really kick it over to see if the engine spun uh, but i did put it in six gear it's got six gears the uh 360s have a six gear and uh put some marble mystery oil just filled the plugs up with marble it didn't have plugs it had um spark plugs spark plug uh caps they're really good at keeping water and debris out. So, that is the first concern here, is will the engine work? Got it for cheap enough where you can part this thing out, or just downright flip it again, and uh, I'd make... Got it for 250 bucks. Don't know if it's a steel yet or not. Obviously, that's going to figure out if the uh, engine spins. Then we'll know if it's a good deal or not. Give me a little walk around. The old plate. Can't really see when it was last registered. Maybe it looks like a 7? I don't know. Maybe you have to take off that other sticker back there. We'll figure it out. But, uh, there's this side. See, I got a tad bit more on that side. Uh, it's missing headlight. That's really no biggie. That's just where all the wiring is, so somebody was tinkering with it. Uh, shock might be bad. Not sure. We were kind of kicking it around and trying to see if it would start or if it would move over and it felt like it was working. Here's the gauge cluster up there. Okay, here's the aftermath of the uh, of its first bath in God knows how many years. A little bit of oil and stuff still down there, but we'll ignore that for now. I'm just gonna get it clean to work on and everything. Actually got some reflection in the what's left of the paint. See, it needs some uh, slight attention. I don't know if I showed you this, but the uh, tire, they've done a couple cookies in the tires here. So, we need to add tires to the list of things we need immediately. Maybe not immediately. They still hold air. So, in the next mile or two, we'll need some tires. But, uh, yeah, here's this side. I think it'll clean up pretty good. I, well, I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself here. We got a lot to do. The tank, I think, has Bondo on it. Um, so, we'll just ignore that and pretend... Pretend that's not there for now. But, uh, yeah, there she is. 
top up the instrument cluster again. Sixteen thousand two hundred and fifty miles. Okay, so I plug my Impala battery in uh, via jumper cables. Uh, it's just sitting on the ground, so it's not even connected to my car anymore. But I turn the key on. I had power over here. Nothing's exploded so far. Uh, just this battery was not doing anything, and uh, was killing my starter. So I got the key on, and I guess we're just gonna start freaking with stuff. We got. Oh, we got a turn light. How about right? We did. Looks like the little flasher's not working. Anything up here? No. I think there's supposed to be blinkers up here. But I'm not sure. Yeah, there are supposed to be. There are wires here. Okay, we got the, the lights work. <laughs> Okay, so we got that fuse plugged in. We'll turn the key on now and we'll see if we get anything. Oh, we do actually. We got dash lights. Does it hard work? No. Shut this light off. You guys might be able to see it. <laughs> very, very faint glow. Let's see, let's turn on the... We've got blinker lightage. I'm a little scared to hit the start button. It doesn't have a uh, crank on there. Um, down there. It does, but I, I could put a thing on it, I think, and it would work. Um, but I don't have one just laying around. So we're just going to hit the start button and um, see if it cranks at all. Um, and there was, well, it really wasn't a way to test and see if the engine was free or not. Um, we just kind of put it in fifth gear and uh, rocked it back and forth. Obviously, it didn't have plugs in it then, and uh, we didn't get anything. It wouldn't move, not that I could tell anyway. So, yeah, we just assumed it was stuck. Um, so yeah, let's just, it's in neutral right now. Let's hit the, uh, the start button and we'll first see if it even works. So, make sure we got power. Yep, I'd say she's stuck. We'll get a jack under here, we'll jack it up and we'll try uh, ripping on this rear wheel and seeing if we can get it to shake around at all. See if we can't get the engine to spin over just a hair. I don't know, not looking good so far, but just the beginning. So. This is kind of interesting, I just found the uh... I just was watching videos on people working on these bikes and there was a compartment under the seat that some guy found the registration for his bike in and uh didn't find the registration but i found the owner's manual all sealed up in this case and i haven't opened it yet it's just a little bit of a i really haven't been handling it all that much there's some condensation on it still um i figured we'd open it up see what we see what the condition is Okay, so we got the uh, certificate of the uh, title here. This came with no title. Um, so at least we got some information to go off of, but I've got the information kind of locked up with my hand here. You guys kind of get an idea what this looks like here. Pretty cool. And you can see rock. It's like rock, rock co savings, and trust co. I wonder if this was a company bike or something, but it was registered in, uh, well, we got the year. We know it's a 75. Well, that's good. Um, it was registered in 76, I think this other paper said. Yeah, right here. Registered year 76. And this other card <clears throat> said it expired in uh, 78 right there. So this thing's probably been off the road. There's only two tabs on this thing. I'd say this thing's been off the road since around uh, 1978, which is a long time. At least legally off the road. I don't know if you know they're using it as a dirt bike or something, but she's been parked a minute. That would 
assume that the odometer of 16,000 miles would be would be accurate. Okay, really all I did, the gas tank was just sitting there loose, so I just kind of undid this fuel line here, and the gas tank just came right off. And then I uh, just kind of undid the uh, air cleaner panels. Um, and that's really all. I just cracked the point case open just because I was curious to see what's going on in there. But, I don't know, we got a long ways to go before we uh, worry about the points. But I did crack the uh, stator thing off here so we can just kind of take a look. And oil, there's definitely gas in this oil. It smells really bad. And uh, a little bit of water. Or, yeah, I was in that sludge from like water being in there and whatnot. So, okay. Took this other little side cover off just so I can kind of get more access in there and whatnot. The, uh,. Now we got this cover off, we were kind of rocking it around and you can kind of see a little bit of movement out of it. But if you come up here and bump the starter, you can see that uh, obviously I'm just pressing it, I'm not holding it. But yeah, these little things are squeaking because they're mad at me. Um, but yeah. A little bit of movement in it, but I think it's it's always kind of have that. So, well, guys, looks like we're gonna be uh, taking her apart. As you can see, the uh, intake valve is opened, and if we go in a little further, we'll see lots of scale going on in there. And uh, basically, you don't want that. You can see how scaly it is. That actually is the PB blaster I put in there. I, I sucked all the uh, Marvel out of it to try and um, see what's going on in there. But yeah, she is um, she's pretty scaly, as you can see. And there's just an idea of the intake gasket right there. Or the intake valve. It's really hard to see on camera, but but yeah. Well, looks like we're gonna take the head off and kind of see what she has to say about it and whatnot. Okay, so just remove the air boxes. Those were interesting to figure out. Uh, pretty simple though. There's just a little rod that goes through there. But yeah, this is the good cylinder I checked on here, and this one actually moves when this kind of rocks a little bit. So this cylinder is free, it's just that other one uh, is our main issue. I'm hoping we can just kind of get in there and hone it out, but I doubt it'll be that easy, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna take off this battery box next. Looks like there's three bolts there. Uh, that way we got room to undo the clamps here and slide this back and get it out of here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo these bolts and undo the clamps. On the boots for the carburetors, these clamps are shot. There's some cracks around there, but got that battery box out of there. This just kind of went up on it, kind of behind it, and this one uh, just kind of like slid in a little gap there. So pretty simple to get off. Um, just kind of want to record in here just so I could kind of see things as well. So I'm going back rebuilding this. Got the uh, choke thingies work. The throttle cable linkage is like it's hooked up but it's not really working the uh well i guess it's it's not bolted down so this thing just kind of like moves but i think the carbs are stuck anyway okay so done a little bit more took the bracket off up here took the engine mount thing off which is on the same bracket and just took that little breather cap off there just just to see if there's anything i don't think i'll have to take those two bolts out but we'll see um, but it looks pretty good in there. All that dust is just from me working on it. It need to be cleaned out anyway, so I'm not really too worried about getting dust and too much dirt in there. Okay, time to take the head off. It just kind of, it did that when it came up. I haven't actually pulled it up yet. It's just kind of coming up on its own. There's two bolts in here. Those two in there, you gotta take those out. Uh, they look like they don't need to go there, but they do. I'll just kind of tickle her out here. 
It appears she's loose. And I'm gonna pull it out that way because uh, all these wires and everything. So it only wants to come out this way apparently, which is not really convenient. Don't want it to come out this way. Everybody, get up and get out of the way. She wants to come out on the right side of the bed. Come on. What are we stuck on? Timing chain? Get out. God damn, it smells like something died in here. There we go. She's free. She's got timing chainage. See if the top end's locked up at all. Nope. It would be moving. Well, looks actually pretty good up here. I do gotta say, cam lobes are still really, really tall from what I can tell. Everything really looks pretty good. Doesn't look, it's black, but it's not, no rust up here at all. Yet. There's even oil still up top. The timing chain bolt is not accessible. So I'm either going to have to break the timing chain to get the head off or somehow push one of these pins out. I will do some Googling before I decide on what one I want to do. Doesn't look too bad in here. This looks a little strange. We got some weird wear marks there pretend we didn't see that rocker arms that's what these are called here's the nuts you take off to adjust them if they weren't in very far so you got a lot of adjusting to do on them still that one got a little bit of marks on it but not bad okay so what I've decided to do put some research online uh, I was gonna go get a chain breaker tool it just kind of you can get some that just break the chain itself or you can get one that drives out these little pins here see how they're kind of mushroomed out uh, I'm just gonna go ahead I've already tried taking the tensioner out um, but I can't move it enough to jump the chain to get this other bolt out the top just does not have that much spin in it um, I've tried messing with it for a little bit now. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind off because I don't have that tool. I'm just going to grind off one of those little pins there, and then um, and then we'll punch it out with a little punch I got. But other than that, there's really no other way to do these. So, we'll punch out one of these pins, and I'll bring you guys back. lifting out that's what's happening she's a going hit in my hand. Oh, there she went. She broke free now. There she went. 
Away she goes. Yeah, now I just gotta take the points off of that end. So I haven't taken the points off yet for some reason, then we'll have a uh, deleted timing chain. Now we can lift this out of here. I already broke the seal loose there. And we can take this camshaft right on out of there. Have it. I did spin it to just a little bit while it was uh, still in there and um, the timing lobes are still there. I spun it and watched the points move a little bit. They're just so small I couldn't see them. So, camshaft is removed so we can finally, one step, I should say finally, we're one step closer to removing the uh, Removing the head. So, yeah. Okay, I got the exhaust off. As you can see, it's just remove these two bolts here, and the flange comes out, and you take those little clamp pieces out. But anyway, um, it's time to. I got all the head bolts removed. Um, as you can see, I haven't actually taken them off yet. But I'll smack it with a deadbolt hammer a couple times and see what happens. There's a bolt here on the other side. I undid that one as well. Um, all the head bolts that I can see are removed. Let's see. See what happens. I'm kind of hitting like a whip because I don't really want to bend the fins all that much. around on his bike he just got it fixed so yeah I'm just gonna start pulling this out the timing chain might get bound up we'll see hopefully I might not be able to take this all the way out Ooh, that's bad rust I can see the rust from here and I'll tell you what it ain't good god damn cylinder number one it's got a bunch of like poop in it or something i don't know what that is looks like it looks like something's been living in there and then we take a gander on the other side and we got fun stuff it's the best word to describe it it's fun stuff let's give it a poke Oh yeah, wasn't going to break that free. Well, there you go. That's why she wouldn't move. How about now? Still locked up. I would, I would, I wonder why. Okay, well I was Googling how to take this, uh, cylinder jug off and apparently you just pull it up and then I whacked it with a hammer really good and uh, broke her free um, this piston is gonna slide I can already see it sliding in there this one yeah I don't know so let me get some gloves on and we'll try and wrestle that out of there
don't know how it's working. Well, oh, it's just pulling that piston down is what it's doing. Bottom end's free. <laughs> This piston needs to come down. You need to persuade her down a little bit. Okay, so it's been about a week uh, since the last clip on the bike when I was trying to get the cylinder. I guess the piston out and the cylinder out. You get the cylinders off the pistons. One of the ways. Um, I ended up having Joey and my brother help me. And we got it out. I had the, me and my brother both pulled on each end of the... Uh, of the jugs and uh, Joey beat the top of it with a mallet and uh, we're able to slide that piston out of there um, so she's out now and the bottom end seems pretty good so far this piston's a little chewed up here that ring looks destroyed or whatever this is yeah that ring's gone I don't really know what's going on there but I haven't cleaned it up yet, obviously. Ring looks like maybe it's cracked right there. So this one's shot. Get new rings for it and whatnot. Um but anyway, I picked up a I wanna see if the cylinder is savable. I'm just wire wheeled uh, inside of it here. It's kind of what it looks like now. And get the light in there just perfect so you can kind of see it but that's what the light that's what it looks like so i'm not really sure what's going to happen to it but um you can see pretty chewy yeah so i just picked up the cylinder home uh from harbor freight a couple of days ago figured it'd be a perfect time to uh test it out and See if it's worth anything. Can't remember how much I got it for, but uh, probably not very much. Okay, so I set the cylinders up here, um, just sitting on top of the vise, and I stuck the cylinder hone in there. I got this one okay. I'm still gonna get new ones. I don't know if you can see a little bit. Of, yeah, there's some pits in there, so gonna have to change the new ones out. I right, just use this hone in there. Definitely not the best hone either. So, so yeah. Um, that'll be it for uh, part one, I guess. Um, getting the bike cleaned up and uh, just taking it apart. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for the next part where we should be getting the cylinder, the cylinders. Um, yeah, I guess getting the cylinders, uh, new rings, new gaskets, and new timing chain. Hopefully getting it all back together and hopefully firing it up next part. I don't know um, if we get lucky. So, all right. That's going to be it for the first part. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.